people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to yet another FNAF game theory reaction video. This one came out of nowhere. I had a feeling we had a FNAF game theory coming up soon. Since recently Matt did release FNAF Security Breach merchandise with Creator Inc. Uh, and I guess today is the day. It looks like it's going to be talking a bit more about Security Breach. It's titled Game Theory FNAF Goodbye Father. FNAF security breach predictions. I don't really know what it's talking about with goodbye father. Um, I guess maybe finally killing off William Afton. I don't know. I was not expecting to record this video today. As you may have heard, we've gotten quite a big drop of FNAF leaks recently. With the ultimate guide and also some FNAF AR news, I want to talk about that. But I'm still a little bit sick, so I'm trying to ease back into making videos. And I guess we're kicking it off with some more game theory. So let's not waste any more time. Hit the like button, subscribe, and let's hop into it. So like I said, this is game theory. FNAF goodbye farther. FNAF security breach predictions. Here we go. Bit by bit, we've been working to solve security breach before its launch. And so True. far, I feel pretty darn good about what we've concluded. The reappearance of Glitch Trap and the dual nature of Vanny seem all but confirmed. The repurposing mm -hmm. of the toy animatronics still feels very much possible. I'm Even still kind of iffy on that. bigger swings have wound up being home runs. Huh. Music man. What? <laughs> That was a well, funny that's reaction to Music Man. Real quick, Music Man FNAF. There's a couple like evidence pieces or like loose threads that I keep in the back. I'm happy he's back. Hold it until Such a, a great character, you know? Music Man is one of those. So Terrifying as well. So see a character with six legs and clown gloves. This is the closest thing that connects. I would assume because anything that usually has a lot of legs like this is able to climb walls and climb ceilings. I wouldn't God, be surprised if this so. be attacking you from the ceiling or a wall. Three weeks later. Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I called it! Let's go! Uh, it's so crazy still Music to me. Man! So, we've talked about the villains, we've talked about the animatronics, we've talked about the plots. Today, with a month left before release, it's time to talk about how this whole thing is gonna oh. end. He's predicting the ending of the game. Interesting. Hello, Hello Internet. Internet. Welcome to <laughs> Game Theory, the show that critics describe as Vanitastic. Before we begin, a quick reminder that one week from today, Tuesday, November 30th, oh, yeah, the big is charity our big stream. and final charity live stream benefiting St. Jude. It is the single biggest the YouTube final one, collaboration huh? of the crazy. year. 50 creators across nine hours. We have everything from Markiplier doing <laughs> trumpet solos and Daco doing contortions to Corpse Jeez. Husband reading children's books and Dream getting dunked on in Squid Game. There's even giveaways that you can That's win crazy. with your donations. Pixel 6s, OLED switches, even special security breach merch that was sent to us directly from Steel Wool Studios. And it's all dedicated huh. to treating children with cancer. New merchandise. And then passing those treatments along so that anyone else right? affected with cancer can benefit. Which, gotta say, all of us know someone who's been affected by cancer. And when you're a dad, hearing that a child has gotten that awful What they did last year was makes crazy. It even harder. So if you want to be a three part million? of the biggest YouTube Holy collab crap. of the year in a day full of fun and charity, make sure you're here I hope next this one goes. Tuesday, November you know, 30th. Can above and beyond. And it seems like it is, which is crazy. I'll need your help to get there, so hit the button that you see on screen right now to Didn't they hit 1 million in like 40 minutes live. or something Since crazy? Since September, Steel Wool Studio has been hyping up the upcoming release of FNAF Security Breach by releasing short clips of an old Freddy Fazbear cartoon Freddy called Friends Freddy and Friends on Tour. These four uploads, styled like an old Hanna-Barbera like cartoon them. like 1969 Scooby-Doo but I like or 1958's Yogi Bear, have been a huge source of information about this upcoming game, with each one hiding a frame or two screenshot of an existing animatronic in the middle Monty. of the episode as well as the more focused reveal of a new animatronic yeah. towards the end. So, hidden in the middle of episodes, you see glitches showcasing Chica, Roxy Wolf, Monty Gator, our security guard from the game's mm -hmm. first teaser, but now with yellow eyes and these Glad he pointed bots, that out. which we later learn in the game's trailer appear to be the service bots that are wandering around the yep. security breaches mall complex. Meanwhile, at the end of each video, you had the reveal of the sun and moon Yay. guy, evil Vanny, and of course Music man! Music There's man! even the reintroduction of Glitch Trap, who, in the final video, can be found by piecing together the upload's 20 purple and yellow That was crazy. kind of like a puzzle. That was Probably insane. One of the coolest ideas for a teaser reveal that I've ever seen. Yeah. And honestly, just a really smart callback, because, based on the YouTube description for these videos, these things are coming from the Fazbear Entertainment Archive. And what are we doing with these old tapes? We're assembling them. Which just is like we mentioned saw with in the FBR, Ultimate Guide. We're assembling the tapes, also the assembling Fazbear Glitch Trap. Archives. So, yet again, we assemble 
assemble a series of tapes, the glitches get stronger, upload after upload, and boom, gold bunny make people go bye-bye. I don't know <laughs> if they meant this intentionally or not, but still, cool detail. And then, just a couple I weeks ago, the actual detail. trailer came out and confirmed a lot of what we were seeing. There's all the animatronics, there's the creepy service bots, there's music, music, man! We know basically <laughs> everything that's in this game because we've seen basically everything that's been teased. Well, except for one thing. Through all the reveals and teasers and the trailers, tentacle. one thing remains a mystery. There is still the one teased item that hasn't been revealed. And that is a tentacle monster. Yes. You heard that right. At the end of Fazbear and Friends Episode 1, we get this. I still, don't, I still don't get this. slithering across the screen. And you know it's a big deal because it's simultaneously the first thing they tease, but also the last thing that they're keeping secret. Huh. In fact, based on I details really from the trailer, as that. well as new clues that have come to light in other parts of the FNAF universe, uh, I not only think books. I know what that is, but also the whole ending sequence of this game. This I'm one ready. is a biggie and feels like, once again, I am swinging for the fences. But if it proves oh, to boy. be true, well, let me tell you, I'll be even more excited than this. Music man! Music man! Speaking of things that get you more hype than seeing your favorite gonna play that reject clip? animatronic make his triumphant <laughs> return, let me just remind oh, you that new FNAFware and Theoryware yep, are available right now for the I did holidays. buy a lot of it, Live by the your way. Wildest van Subscribe so you don't miss awesome it. awesome Glamrock Freddy denim jacket, but look out, someone's watching your back. Or if really? black is in your color, how about something a bit brighter? Like the satin jacket with pink and cyan highlights. It's warm, it's cozy, and it's covered <laughs> in God, embroidered the patches. The only thing it doesn't so have are totally rad lasers to go with it. Pew, 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 pew. There's also the option of short or long sleeve yeah, t-shirts like for all, all your the favorites, shirts, from Monty to the Banny socks, and light, everyone in between. Pins, Meanwhile, for all the rest of you theorists, a whole bunch we of got stuff. the drip that'll make your friends go she. Sheesh. Like this jogger set. You'll be camouflaged at your next chess club meeting in stylish black and white with a comfortable yeah, slim leg fit. Yeah, because that's exactly enough to wear what I thought. And look cool chess. In public, but warm and soft enough for all the indoor antisocial cuddling you could possibly want. Speaking of soft and cuddly, theory blanket. That's all I have wow, to say. Theory so cool. blanket. You and your cats Listen, will love it. I'm if you're looking for more reacting to his content. To I'm wrap yourself getting in the big benefits old hug from this. this I can at least let him do jacket. his, his promos, game okay? Theory beanie. Perfect for the wet weather or just a cold basement that you want to keep cold because you don't want to run up your heating bill. Who knows, maybe that's just me and Steph. Best of all, we have everything in stock right now. Wow. Which means it's all ready to ship out with no shortages or delays. That means you get it ASAP for yourself or whoever you're gifting it to. Instant gratification for the win. So go get your FNAF wear nice. or theory wear by using the link down in the description or the merch shop I love the below shirts. as YouTube continues so good. to try and train you to use their Jackets. platform as a one-stop shop for all your consumerist wow. needs. <laughs> now then, let's talk to Tentacles. Across the series, Ooh. there's only ever been one character associated with a long, Pan slimy Stan black tentacles, and, and that is Nightmareon, the Nightmare Puppet, who well. came out as part of the Halloween update for FNAF 4 way back when I still had hopes that this series would end with four games. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh, what a fool well. I was. And who we more recently saw in FNAF VR's Night Terrors minigame. I don't this think it's Nightmareon. This thing is like a tentacle that is just waiting to happen. <laughs> Probably a tentacle that's already happened, to be honest, but I dare not look in that direction. So, when you see a tentacle... Hey. Sliding across a staticky screen, immediately your mind is gonna jump to this character. And from a story standpoint, this would also make some level of sense. I mean, William Afton is back in the form of Glitch Trap, so presumably the puppet, this protector of lost the souls puppet that did stands live. opposed to him, would try its best to come along Spoilers. for the ride too in an effort to <laughs> thwart leaks. him once more. One problem with all this though, Nightmare Own isn't canon. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's complicated. Yeah. Go figure yeah, I mean, it's, it's FNAF. FNAF. Big surprise <laughs> True. there. You see, Nightmare Own's original appearance in FNAF 4's Halloween update is not canon, something confirmed by Scott a long time ago before that DLC launched. Its appearance in FNAF VR, on the other hand, is canon, but not in the way you think. Yeah. This is because FNAF VR is itself a video game produced by God Fazbear Entertainment. I so Nightmare on in the world of FNAF is no better than Mario, or Master Chief, or a Slender Man. It's a that's video game truth. character, and as far as we know, that's it. It's not an actual active part of the real world lore in okay. that universe. And you see, it's the lore that provides us another problem here. Canonically, the puppet is burned away. Its spirit is released in the fire that happens at the end of Pizzeria Simulator. And unlike after, well, who created a digitized version uh, of himself hidden in a video maybe game, not something so much tells anymore. me that the puppet was encoding C++ in between giving gifts, giving life. As 
the last nail in the coffin here. The tentacle that we see at the end of Freddy and Friends is missing its signature white stripes. Are there yeah. ways to bring the puppet back? Sure. Puppet mask didn't fully burn away and was found in the wreckage of the FNAF 6 pizzeria. There so you go. it's still infused with the agony of Charlie in order to fight against Afton one final time. Whatever, whatever, whatever. But honestly, I think there's <laughs> How I feel exactly. a better candidate for that tentacle baby. So the final Fazbear Frights book just came out, number 11, Prankster. Oh, and with it books. came the chance when to look back across the whole collection and analyze what Easter eggs were there to help solve the game lore. One big takeaway from the series, we now absolutely know what was inside the FNAF 4 box. It was a person. Don't at me about this one. This is undeniable at this point, and uh, nothing I mean, you yeah. say is going to change my mind about it. Wait, yeah, Here's obviously. why. In Prankster, we get this line during the finale, quote, Jake had found the real homeless girl that Eleanor replaced. Yeah, this As has a happened quick aside, a few times. Reminder, Eleanor is this book's stand-in for baby. The real girl had been <clears throat> locked in a trunk in the abandoned building where Jake had originally found Eleanor. Now, this one instance alone wouldn't be enough to make me 100% sure about this, but they repeat it twice. Earlier mm -hmm. in the same stretch of like 20 or so pages, the and exact same thing Charlie happens again. Only this time, it's Eleanor well. that's locked in the box waiting to pop fourth out. Closet. And if those two times weren't enough yeah, for you, in yeah, the yeah. final FNAF novel, The Fourth Closet, Baby hides a person inside of a large <laughs> chest neck? and then goes what? to steal their identity. Quote from this book, John moved I to a large edit. green that's chest, creepy. the paint almost entirely worn off. There was no lock. John knelt beside it, found the handle, and heaved it open, then shuddered, falling back and pushing himself away. Jessica, he gasped, moving back to the chest and leaning over books. it. Jessica, so what, John? I'm trying to listen. Well, it's, it's Charlie. Kind of good. Hoarsely, Mostly good in my opinion. So three times in the various books of this franchise have we opened up a chest to find some person resting inside. That alone would be enough to be a trend, but the similarities in these situations continue. Not only does this very odd and very specific thing happen in both Fazbear Frights and the Silver Eyes novels, but both times the person inside the box is Charlie the Puppet, or whatever her equivalent is in that universe. In the fourth closet, it's True. Charlotte, daughter of the genius animatronic inventor Henry, who tragically loses his young girl and then tries to rebuild her using robots. And over in Fazbear oh Frights, the homeless girl in the box is named Ranelle. Stop me if this starts to sound familiar, but she's the daughter of genius inventor Dr. Talbert, who tragically loses his young girl and then tries hmm. to keep her alive by inventing Remnant. I'm just Sounds saying, familiar. Like it, or not, it just seems like the books are trying real hard to tell us the solution to this one. Sure. And that's yeah. not a theory. That is me just literally calling attention to a repeated <laughs> pattern in the books. Anyway, with the final Fazbear Fright comes the ending to the Stitch Wraith story that I've been yammering on about for the better part of two years. And for good reason, this one story, told in short chunks at the end of each novel, has contained some of the biggest lore reveals of any piece of media this franchise has ever produced. Yeah. It was this story that really strengthened my belief in Golden Freddy having two souls inside of him. It's also the one that gives us that scene that we just talked about with the box. It even has a lore dump in the final pages where they just outright define what <laughs> Remnant is. So that's why it really caught Ooh. my attention when Baby started to do something that was completely out of character. Shooting long black tentacles out of her body. Quote from the book, her eyes huh. bulged. Black tentacles shot from her mouth, from her fingers, from her toes. The slimy black vines climbed up the walls and slithered over the floor. Tentacles flew from her and wrapped around his face. Yeah, that, uh, that's new. <laughs> so we have Whoa. ourselves Baby, an animatronic yeah. that can transform into a believable copy <laughs> of any person, now also able to erupt into blood tentacles. Yeah, the, uh, the tentacles are made from black blood. Sorry if I didn't mention that before, but, He's uh, goddamn books, yep, bro. But there's another reason I'll, I think I'll, I will never tentacle understand monster. It's because I think she's actually our big bad of the game. The one who is really pulling the strings here. You see, back in April, I did three short mini-theories on Security Breach, with one focused on exactly this topic, the return of Elizabeth Afton. At the time, it was a mini-theory mm -hmm. for a reason. It was just a hunch with a teeny bit of evidence. But now, that evidence is starting to pile up faster than dead bodies in a pizzeria. And to understand why, oh. we have to make one more trip to the books. At the midway point of our Stitch Wraith story, we have our Golden Freddy spirit stand-ins having to equip themselves with the puppet mask <laughs> in order to fight against a giant 15-foot trash rabbit called the Afton Amalgamation. Yes. You're not stroking out, friends. I, I that remember, is the unironic words printed onto real paper and produced en masse for readers to consume. You hear that? Shakespeare is rolling in his grave as we speak. Basically, Afton's spirit had possessed a lot of different objects, and those all fused together with trash in order to form a giant garbage Good Godzilla. God. Back when I wrote that theory, I had this to say. I am not going to sit here and say that we will at some point in this series be forced to fight a giant trash bunny possessed. 
possessed by a serial killer. But now, seven months later, things have changed. And, uh, yeah, I am gonna sit here and say that we will yeah, at some point probably. in the series be forced to fight a giant trash bunny possessed by a serial killer. Yep, the series about pizzeria-themed murders has decided that giant garbage rabbit kaiju is the next logical step in the story that they feel it wants to tell. Goddamn FNAF nowadays. Sometimes. Now, if this was yeah, a normal true. FNAF game, then no. Of course, there's no giant trash monster. But this is anything but a normal FNAF game. First, we know that Security Breach will have boss battles. This mm -hmm. is confirmed on the PlayStation blog article covering the game. And if these moments of Monty Gator Monty. from the trailer don't look like a boss battle intro sequence, then I don't know what does. Reminds me of the American Gladiators game Assault. We also know that the okay. game's primary mechanic is climbing into Freddy's oversized birthday Dude, cake hatch to pilot please. him around like a mech suit. You don't just include a mech oh. suit like that in your game if all you're fight doing with it Afton is stealthing around a mall. Suit. You insert that sort of stuff in order to punch serial killers <laughs> in the face. But you know what seals the deal for me is the trailer. Throughout the Freddy and Friends teaser images, we've seen pictures of the animatronics all cracked and broken. Are mm -hmm. they corrupted by Afton? Maybe we destroy them over the course of the night? It's it's a weird little More detail. Likely but then the trailer goes and shows us a bit more. We see this scene of a broken oh, yeah. chica that's attacking us in a tunnel made from garbage. Now that is a bizarre setting for a game that's set in a mall and, according to the PlayStation Store, the sewers underneath the mall. Trash is just everywhere. So, is this the game that's finally given us what we've all been demanding? Hashtag justice for trash in the gang? Let's or go! is it something more? Remember what I, I said about so. the broken version of the animatronics <laughs> that we keep seeing in the trailers? Well, one of the main components of Trash Afton are the pieces and parts of other ruined animatronics. I wouldn't be surprised if the final boss battle of the game is against a oh giant amalgamation of all the other animatronics combined, which in turn strengthens the baby theory. You see, in the books, yet again, Trash Afton is described as weak. In fact, it's so important that they decide to say it twice, first in book six, and then again in book 11. In reality, it's actually Eleanor that's powering the whole thing. So if we mm -hmm. do in fact descend down into a landfill to fight a giant trash rabbit kaiju, the one really pulling the strings will be the black blood tentacles of the shape-shifting baby. But there's one last thing worth mentioning, and that's this game's return to the first ever pizzeria, Fred Bear's Family Diner. Docco recently did a oh, live I didn't to think he'd bring these up. Campaign. Docco, you're an amazing and wonderful person. Thank you, thank you for your support. But whenever there's a Docco charity stream, you know that I didn't think he'd bring these up. I thought it was too soon. Teasers. And Steel Wool did not disappoint. They sent him a series of posters, including these three from Fred Bear's Family Diner. The original pizzeria mentioned way back in FNAF 2. I'm gonna try to contact the original restaurant. Oh, FNAF owner. 2. I think the name of the place was Fred Bear's Family I miss FNAF Diner 2. or something like that. Closed for years, though. I doubt we'll be able to track anybody down. Now, the existence of these posters alone is pretty sus, considering game developers don't have the bandwidth to spend a lot of time Cut on it. artwork that isn't getting used in your actual game. What's even weirder, they though, are is used. that the new Freddy and Friends teasers also revisit what appears to be the first pizzeria in Episode 2, based on the building's small size, red yeah. and white striped awnings, and wooden interior. But all of that, coupled with the descent into a landfill-looking area, leads me to believe that the mall is built on top of the original Red Bear's family diner location. We've actually seen a lot of this before throughout the series. In both Sister Location and the Twisted Ones, oh, we have well, large yeah. underground warehouses constructed under existing buildings and businesses. And again, in the Silver Eyes, we see Charlie and the gang breaking into a giant mall, read also Pizza Plex, built around no! one of the earliest pizzeria Lally's locations. Game. Even FNAF VR ended with the scene of Glitch that Trap beckoning us to the back poster. room where we then went out Come the on, side man. door towards Come Security on. Breaches Mall in the middle of being constructed. Long story short, there is a constant running theme of old places being connected to and buried under new flashier establishments. So, us going down a trash tunnel in the trailer, passing old wrecked versions of the animatronics? We have to be headed somewhere. Why not the first ever location, where Glitch Trap would be at his strongest, would be able to be resurrected into the nightmare hand that we saw at the end of the first teaser, notice those fingers, and eventually form into the trash monster that we fight. So that, yeah. my friends, is the wild prediction I have for the I'm not final act fully of this game. set you descend with the Fred Bear was being underneath it, but I guess I can kind of see building, it. Which eventually leads to the site of the first ever diner, Fred Bear's family. Here, where his powers are strongest, Glitch Trap leaves Vanny's body and regains his own. We hop into our mecha Freddy for a boss battle <laughs> to knock him around a bit, and desperate, he absorbs all the ruined animatronics and trash around him. We destroy him yet again, only to I mean, reveal it sounds the tight. black tentacles. It was baby all along. Cue the 
the next game and subsequent 20 installment it. book series. No! But, hey, these animatronics may never be horrifying, ends. but not everything that's made of metal has to be. That's for our sponsor, mm. No! Yeah, I think that was pretty all right. I'm surprised he brought up Threadbarrows. I thought that was like way too recent for him to bring it up, but... It's nice to know his input. Again, there were some leaks about the ultimate guide, which I probably shouldn't talk about here, but it does kind of enforce this theory a bit with the books and the games. But, um, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I think the ending of the game is something not a whole lot of people talk about, and so it's interesting to hear what MatPat thinks about it. Oh, uh, but yeah, dude, Security Breach comes out and, like what, 20-ish days? It's crazy. I can't wait for the game, and I can't wait to play it on this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching another reaction to Game Theory. Hope you enjoyed. Tell me, what are your theories about Security Breach? What do you think about the theory? All that good stuff in the comments down below, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.